Zach Strickland here with a health and pharma update from World Courier. Today I'm joined by Ray Wood, Head of Global Carrier Management for World Courier, an Amerisource Bergen company. Ray, thanks for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Good deal. So over a year from the start of the pandemic, how has the air cargo market adjusted during this time? Well, there'd be no surprise that air cargo capacity and board passenger services almost disappeared overnight. At its peak just over a year ago, belly availability was as low as minus 80% versus 2019. Whilst the demand for freighter capacity soared, airlines responded by dusting off serviceable all-cargo aircraft from deserts and delaying fleet retirement programs. This is evident if you look at the differences in reported incomes from pure freighter operators, mixed fleets and pure belly airlines. Right now, combined wide-body capacity is approximately 12% behind the same period of 2019. This is heavily contributed by cargo-only passenger fleet operations. Belly capacity is slowly recovering, but remains in the region of 50% below the prior period of the pandemic. That said, the creativity and innovation from air cargo industry has proven powerful in meeting the fundamental challenges in keeping global trade on the move, especially during the time of increasing demand on chemicals, perishables, and in particular pharmaceuticals. So, Ray, where do you see the current bottlenecks for pharmaceutical air freight? Yeah, I personally believe that pharmaceutical cargo will always find its way on board the aircraft, providing it's handled correctly. The challenge remains the cost per kilo paid in order to gain that access. At certain points during 2020, the cost per kilo rose by almost 100% on some trade lanes, primarily caused by supply shortfall and disruption to distribution chains. As COVID-19 vaccines were rolling out, there was a fear that the demand will exhaust all available capacity as nations quite rightly push on to vaccinate their populations. Current reality is that this is not the case. Vaccine batches are being uplifted in smaller and more frequent cycles, enabling easier management at first and final mile. However, in contrast, is a recent reaction to India's plight in the face of the latest wave of the pandemic and how the industry has responded to collectively provide the much needed support for supplies in many shapes and forms. Despite financial pressures, most were completed without charge. Also, let's not forget that whilst trade slowly dramatically as well as the capacity, the demand has continuously increased as orders and back orders are being fulfilled in multiple industry verticals. Demand now really is outstripping supply, taking semiconductors as an example. The plants dependent on peripheral microchip supply are having to temporarily reduce or spend production until backlog is fulfilled. This has a direct effect on the availability of air capacity, especially to take into conjunction the vast sea freight container shortage, causing some mode switches and continual squeezing of availability. Such circumstances are now not new, although compound the current recovery trends. It's clear also that the sewage blockades will have longer than expected impacts on the recovery of the market. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, bottlenecks and disruptions everywhere this year. So how was World Courier able to react positively to sustain business continuity as the pandemic unfolded? So historical experience of managing through prior crises have equipped our associates enormously with the knowledge of navigating our way through diverse situations. We've always managed strong relationships with our carrier partners, whilst taking an agnostic approach to selection based upon meeting our customers' exacting standards. The vertical we work almost exclusively within has always presented challenges. Over time, this has been made less challenging with the more evolution of sophisticated carrier products, coupled with our own development of advanced packaging solutions, process management, and global GXP compliance. One of the key factors of the relationships is the ability to discuss openly and transparently any influencing factors over success or failure in delivery for our customers. Frequent and ongoing communication has enabled us to identify potential challenges before it's too late and adjust our transport plans in accordance to deliver our promise with limited effect for the customer. This can and has resulted in the deployment and charter options if absolutely required. Yeah, these disruptions and challenges often uh, promote positive change, don't they? So what development do you see with international air cargo in the coming months into next year? Well, this is purely my opinion but based around multiple discussions with industry folk, networks will start to return with both passenger confidence and regulatory restrictions enable increased seat sales. Likely what will be initially noticeable will be the visiting friends and relatives leisure factor. Great for economy sales, however, airlines depend heavily on income generated by the business passenger turning left aboard in the aircraft. 
This may well be slower to return as less likely in similar numbers to pre-pandemic levels based on generic businesses' affordability to travel. Uh, the change in how we conduct business via virtual meetings, most of us are Zoomers nowadays, and the potential return for the costs of flying individuals needs to be recognised as well. Um, airlines are working to find that fine line in recovering income, enabling reinvestment into fleet and network versus overpricing and discouraging air travel. For some period to come, potentially two years at least, maybe even more, freighters will remain dominant and thus cargo yields will remain higher than pre-pandemic levels, likely between 30 and 50 percent higher than pre-pandemic, although they will be more visibly stable. Yeah, the, uh, the passenger flight is going to be interesting to see how it all unfolds. Well, thank you, Ray, uh, for that. And also look out for more World Courier updates in the coming months. Thank you so much for watching.